well. Um, we are recording this session today. We will share the recording to you um, sometime later this afternoon or tomorrow. All right, and just kind of to go through some of our logistics. Again, welcome to all of you. Um, our agenda will be shared on the chat. Uh, you should have it by now. If not, uh, let us know and we will share it again. And we will share that from time to time throughout this session. Currently right now, your sound and um, is this, I mean, the uh, your microphone is off. So if you do have any questions, um, feel free to ask your questions on the chat, or you can also send us a direct uh, message to either Sheila, John, or me, and we will answer your questions uh, later uh, during our discussion. The slides again, and the recording will be shared to you all. Um, and that will be to anyone that's uh, registered uh, through for this session. If you want to use the closed captioning that is enabled in this session, just go down to uh, one of the icons at the bottom of your screen on Zoom, and you should be able to see the closed captioning through there. And just some kind of logistics for us to go through today, um, just some of our community, community call norms. So in this space, we strive to engage in respectful discussion, ask questions and seek clarification. So please do that if you have any kind of questions about what's going on, or if you just need some clarifications, please let us know. Also, we ask that you be receptive to feedback from others. All of these, as well as any other of all of our community calm norms, you can take a look at that on our Lyricist Code of Conduct. Our agenda today, um, we are going through our welcome slides now, and then we will go through a little bit on the DSpace overview, and we will go look at an uh, DSpace ORCID API integration. Why is it important? What does it do? And we will also go through a demo. And then after that, we will have some questions and discussions. So our Q&A um, at the tail end of this session. So some introductions, um, I'm Paolo Guhilde, I'm the ORCID community, uh, I'm the ORCID US community specialist. I will let Sheila and Jan introduce themselves. Sheila. Hey everyone, I'm Sheila Rabin. I'm the program leader for persistent identifier communities at Lyricis. So that includes our ORCID US community, and we also have a data site US community. And I am John Aspler. I work at the Canadian Research Knowledge Network as the manager of the Canadian PID community, which includes ORCID Canada as well as Datacite Canada. Et uh, bien sûr, c'est un uh, consortium bilingue. Donc, si vous avez des questions en français, je vous invite à les poser en, en français. Je pourrais les traduire. Uh, if you would like to ask your questions or engage in French, please feel free. I will translate. Thank you, Sheila and John. And we also have our special guest today, Andrea Bolini, uh, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer at Four Science. So Andrea will be showing us a demo of the DSpace integration later on. And with that, I will pass it on to Sheila to talk more about DSpace. Yeah, so if you go to the next slide, I just have a few points to kind of introduce DSpace for those who may not be familiar or maybe a, a refresher for some of you. Um, DSpace is an open source repository software. It is community driven. That means it is supported entirely by organizations and organizational members of DSpace. Um, as a community driven uh, software, Lyricis is the community home and kind of like the administrative home of DSpace. Um, if you've been around for a while, you may remember uh, an organization called Duraspace. Um, a few years ago, um, Lyricis and Duraspace kind of merged, and, and so DSpace is now kind of under the Lyricis community supported software programs. Um, and Lyricis is also the community home of the ORCID US community. Um, so we do many things at Lyricis. Um, but the features and development priorities of DSpace 
are actually determined by the DSpace community. So the individuals that work mm -hmm. at the organizations that use the DSpace software. Um, and there's a DSpace leadership group that provides governance for the DSpace community. Um, and so when things get updated, when features get added to DSpace, those are um, priorities that have been determined by the community. So it very much is community driven. And um, recently, most of that improvement and development work has been done by um, software partners, such as For Science. Um, and Andrea will tell us a little bit more about For Science in a minute. Um, but for the purposes of today's call, um, the ORCID API integration um, that DSpace now has available in version 7.3 and, and forward, um, that development work was done by Andrea and the team at For Science. Um, so that's a little bit of just an overview of DSpace. Um, on the next slide, um, we are also all very excited to announce that uh, for, uh, for Science is a certified ORCID service provider and DSpace is now included in that um, certification. Andrea, I don't know if you want to say a little bit more about, um, about this because it is like it's kind of breaking news. It just happened. Um, so if you want to share a little bit more with us about this, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, we are really excited about this news. For Science uh, has been an ORCID service provider, certified service provider uh, since a couple of years now for the space Chris. It is our extension of uh, uh, the space, but Science version 7.3 of the space, uh, most of the feature has been backported from the space Chris to the space. That's the feature related to the ORCID integration. And we uh, were able to, to go through this integration with the ORCID team and have it reviewed by them and finally certified as a valid solution, uh, a valid integration solution for ORCID. Um, this certification process uh, is, uh, uh, is a combination of practices that uh, your service provider need to support your IT support need to, to provide to you to, to use ORCID and software feature that need to be implemented. So this is just a certification for the, the space service provided by For Science, but it's a great news for all the space community in general because it means that most or all of the, the space integration with ORCID has been reviewed by the ORCID team and um, is ready is respect to the guideline from ORCID and is a sweet bold integration. Great, thanks Andrea. Um, so on the next slide, I think um, we're gonna hear from John. Yeah, thanks so much, Sheila. And, and Andrea, this is, I'm so glad that we have this breaking news. We can share it on this webinar uh, that it has been certified um, because this is a really important integration. Um, if you could just, next point. I decided to animate my Google Slides. I don't know why, but that's okay. <laughs> so um, the main reason why I think it's really important to talk about this integration, especially with these communities, is that it's an incredibly widely used platform, especially in Canada. We're not a huge library community, but in terms of institutional repositories, probably about 90% of our university members uh, in ORCID CA use DSpace as their repository for, for publications and, and possibly even for theses. And even within the federal government, where we have another uh, group of members, they also sometimes are using DSpace and, and some of the emerging uh, repositories within the federal government are using DSpace. So across sectors, it's, it's used by so many of our members. And because of that, it's one of those integrations that uh, I know I'm particularly excited about because I'm very hopeful that within the Canadian community, once we start to migrate to DSpace 7.3, which I know is, is uh, its own uh, uh, sort of plan and, and project, um, there is an opportunity to start engaging with uh, this other integration. Next point, please. 
And really, the, the key point I want to emphasize here is that DSpace is an incredibly important strategic target. And when it comes to the rising use of ORCID integrations in Canada and across the world, uh, we know that the ORCID OJS plugin, which is the other most used integration in Canada, was uh, significant in terms of its uh, rising or, or the way that it has caused the number of ORCID integrations, again, at least in Canada, but I'm, I'm sure in other places too, to rise pretty substantially. A full third of Canadian integrations are now the ORCID OJS plugin. And we can see increasing use, writing publications from the OJS plugin to uh, ORCID records, scholars whose publications on OJS platforms across the country, including their ORCID ID in the metadata, um, so it becomes easier to connect to those scholars' other works or to identify that specific John Smith or whomever are doing all that good core disambiguation work that ORCID does. And so like the ORCID OJS integration, which was sort of for us uh, now is one of the sort of earliest low hanging fruits for new members, especially new university members. When they join us, we say, let's start by talking about turning on the ORCID plugin for OJS. Similarly, our hope is that DSpace can become eventually another one of those low hanging fruits once folks have migrated to 7.3. And from there, our third most popular integration in Canada is Dataverse. And that is another conversation that we are going to be having. And really, the only other thing I want to emphasize here is that, as Sheila has said, um, the and I just copied this point directly from from that slide. DSpace, like OJS and PKP, and and many of the other tools that we're we're going to be talking about, or that are interesting for I think many Canadian universities and commonly used there, is that they are open source, community driven, and supported by organizational members like our Orchid Consortia themselves. And it reflects the values of Orchid Canada and our community members as we seek to integrate some of these more commonly used systems for more members at home and around the world. So we're very excited about the work that the folks at Four Science have done. And I'm just going to turn it over now to Andrea for the demo, because um, I know how exciting this is, at least for me, but I hope for all of you as well. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so let me just say a few words about for science We are a uh, um, platinum partner for uh, this space. We are the space service provider and one of the major contributors to the Space 7 platform. I'm very happy to, to participate in this meeting today because sharing is one of our key principles. We are very involved uh, with the uh, um, with the ORCID initiative uh, and other global initiative like uh, uh, the Confederation of Open Access uh, Repository, Core for Next Generation Repository, the Notify Project, and many other initiatives. We also contribute to uh, OJS and uh, Dataverse and any open source software that we are lucky to use in our, uh, in our business. So today I will try to uh, show you directly what you can do with the new version of this space. We are using the official demo from the community. So it's 7.4. And uh, uh, I'm going to use two different browser. In one, we will be an administrator and I will log it in now as an administrator in this browser. And uh, we can also log it in uh, in the other browser uh, with our researcher. So we have this browser ready with our administrator. Let's move to the other browser. Okay, so the first in, uh, the entry point of the ORCID integration in the Space 7 is the login. Uh, you can uh, uh, log in uh, in your DSpace instance using uh, several different identity provider. You can use username, password, shibboleth, LDAP, or whatever you want. And you can eventually also enable the uh, login via ORCID. I will uh, go back on that uh, later, but the ORCID login is not a requirement to enable synchronization of your DSpace uh, uh, with ORCID. Is just another option that uh, that you have. 
So we are using the sandbox environment of Orchid because of course we are working on a demo website. So I'm logged in with a, a fake profile that uh, was created on, on the sandbox, uh, on the Orchid sandbox. Okay, the login process has been successful and you can review, verify that because now we are logged in as famous researcher, uh, that is the, the profile that we also have on the sandbox. I will go to open also the, the sandbox account uh, directly so that you can see side by side also the information that are already present on uh, on this profile on, on the Orchid sandbox. This profile has been used for a couple of different demos, so there are already some uh, content uh, in it. But let's go back to uh, this space. Science version 7.3, in, uh, also in this space, uh, exists the concept of researcher profile. You can uh, access this researcher profile going to through the profile entry menu. And from here, the, this uh, account in this space already have our research profile associated and it's set as public and we can go to visit this profile or eventually we can make it private or delete and so on. On this profile, we already have uh, uh, some information ready. Uh, we have our research project uh, linked, to, um, linked to this researcher and we have a two uh, publication. As you see here now, we are just logged as a normal researcher, so we are not administrator, but we have two uh, extra uh, button here that allow us to make uh, a minimal edit of this profile. So we can change our uh, job title, uh, we can add some metadata, some personal information uh, directly, and we can manage the ORCID integration. As we are already logged in uh, via ORCID, when we have logged in uh, the first time, ORCID has asked for permission uh, to, to grant permission to this space to uh, manipulate the ORCID uh, the, the ORCID profile. So we already have all the, uh, the permission, we already have granted all the permission to ORCID. Uh, at any time, the researcher have full control over his ORCID profile. So it's possible to disconnect the local display profile from ORCID if you make it for, by mistake or uh, for any other reason. And you can manage the, prefer the preferences, the settings to, to maintain the content in this space synchronized with your ORCID profile. So we are going to push information from this space to your ORCID profile. This can happen uh, essentially in two ways. You can decide to manually this, um, push all the information to ORCID. So it will be the researcher itself that uh, um, when appropriate, at appropriate time, we'll uh, uh, push the button to, to send uh, an update or new record uh, to our um, ORCID profile. Or uh, it's possible to set up a batch script that will process all the profile that have uh, um, selected these synchronization mods, so the batch synchronization mod to be automatically process, uh, processed or over the night, for instance. And again, uh, the researcher um, can decide uh, which part of the, uh, the space profile need to be synchronized, need to be pushed to, uh, to ORCID. So here uh, we decide to push publication, funding information, and also uh, profile information related to uh, bibliographical uh, data, that mean uh, the URL right now, and uh, um, eventually other identifier that could be present in the local space 
um, profile. In the uh, bottom of the page, you see the ORCID registry uh, queue, that is uh, the stuff that is present in this space that need to be synchronized with ORCID. So again, according to the synchronization mode, this queue will be processed automatically, or you need to make a decision manually uh, just using this button. So to push this new publication to the ORCID registry or uh, to discard these, uh, um, this information so that it will be not synchronized um, with ORCID. If you look to the uh, ORCID the researcher profile for this, um, for this researcher, you will see that uh, uh, we already have synchronized uh, uh, one publication, uh, one funding information, and this came from the, the Space 7 demo. So uh, this is the, the the project that is present in the local DSpace uh, uh, profile that was synchronized by me uh, this morning. Sorry, this Italian morning, <laughs> because I'm based in Rome and now is uh, evening in Rome. Um, and I also have already synchronized one of the two publications uh, that are present in the local DSpace profile. So what I want to do now is, as we have already synchronized this fund, uh, this funding, uh, I want to uh, modify the information available in this space for, um, for this funding. So this is uh, my funding and we will uh, search for it with the, with the administrator account so is ORCID webinar created a collection for all this content. And here is our uh, funding. So let's say that uh, a librarian or the administrator will edit uh, the information on this funding that has been already synchronized with ORCID. Uh, so the current uh, title is a sample funding uh, for the ORCID webinar to be updated. And this match with what we have in the ORCID profile. If the administrator or the librarian make a change, for instance, we can remove the to be updated part from, uh, from the metadata and we save this information. If I go back to the uh, um, researcher uh, account and uh, go back to the uh, ORCID page, we see that now the ORCID uh, registry queue has been updated and we also have a new entry related to the, uh, to the project that in this case need to be updated on the ORCID registry. So here you see the two different icon when one record is already present on the ORCID but need to be updated with new information available in the space. And the icon that is used, the plus icon, when an information is only available on the space and need to be pushed to, to ORCID for the first time. And it's very easy. You click on this button and uh, this space will provide you a feedback about the synchronization. So in this case, it was successful. And if we go back to the uh, ORCID profile and we refresh, uh, we should see that the funding uh, has been updated. And the title now doesn't contain any uh, anymore to, to be updated uh, postfix. And the same is true also for our publication. So we can just push this uh, publication uh, to the ORCID profile. So also in this case was uh, the, the push was successful. And if we go uh, this profile, now we have four uh, works, but if I uh, refresh, we should found the five. Yes, it's five work. And uh, uh, this was the, the previous uh, record already pushed the um, couple of hours ago. And this is the, a uh, new publication that we have just pushed from uh, uh, this space to, 
um, from this base to ORCID. In the information that need to be synchronized are automatically identified by the system uh, following uh, uh, the relation that exists among all the, uh, um, all the item in this space. So you have the central item that is the pro researcher profile and to this item uh, you could connect researcher profile and publication. So if we open the research project, uh, you will see that this project is connected with uh, an author, with uh, a publication and with an organization that is the funder. And if we, I go over to publication, you will see that uh, our famous researcher is mentioned as an author of this publication. So using this information, this space is able to understand what need to be synchronized and push it to which researcher profile on the ORCID side. Another feature uh, that has been implemented in the integration is related to the capacity to import data from, uh, from ORCID. So you can, for instance, import uh, um, publication from an ORCID profile. Right now, this import is more intended to be used by a librarian or eventually also by the researcher itself, but it requires to input ORCID ID manual in, uh, in the search field so that we can search ORCID using this um, ORCID ID. And we will get uh, from ORCID, the, the list of uh, publications that uh, um, are present in the ORCID profile, but doesn't come from this space. So in this case, if you remember, we have five work in the, research, in the ORCID profile, but two of these work has been created in the ORCID profile directly by this space, by the demo of this space saver. Uh, so in the import, we are only presented with the other three um, publication. And we can just pick one of them and start quickly a new submission uh, that will be profiled with information available on the ORCID profile. This is quite powerful because the information um, can come on the ORCID profile uh, from several sources. So publisher are going more and more to push uh, metadata to the ORCID profile, um, publication to ORCID profile, but also um, ORCID have uh, um, um, the possibility to import in the ORCID profile uh, from external database like Scopus or Web of Science. So this is also an option for researcher at the institution that doesn't have a direct um, subscription with Scopus or Web of Science to populate uh, their uh, profile with information from Scopus and uh, Web of Science and later on import this publication uh, also in, uh, um, in this space using this feature. I will go back to our slide desk to give you a couple of more technical information. Okay. So I left uh, the screen as a backup in uh, the slide. So it, the slide will be available after the meeting. Uh, so it will be also useful for you to check. I have some point of attention uh, that, uh, that you need to pay when you activate this feature in, uh, uh, in the space server. First of all, this feature is not enabled by default. So you need to um, turn off a configuration parameter to enable the ORCID synchronization. And 
The main reason for that is because these feature require uh, other two um, features that are currently optional in this base set. So you need to uh, take advantage of the rich data model that you can set up in this base seven using configurable entities. More specifically, you need at least to enable the person entity and the publication entity with their linkage, of course. And if you want to synchronize also funding information, you need to enable the, the project and the org, org unit entity into the space data model. There is a slightly difference in the wording between the space and ORCID. So um, publication, what we name publication in the space are named works on, in uh, ORCID. And what this space name project are named funding in ORCID. Also, the funding are have a funder uh, on the ORCID side, and the funder is a special type of organization unit. So it's named org unit in uh, in this space. And also, you need to enable the other feature that is named the researcher profile in this space. That is the one that enables your researcher to have a limited access to to edit. Uh, is person item so that they can add keywords, URL, and manage other detail of uh, her profile. Uh, again, the use of the ORCID login is not mandatory to enable the integration. So you can connect a local profile, uh, both using the login. So if you log in via ORCID, your profile will be automatically linked with ORCID. But if you decide to don't use the ORCID login, you can still log in in, in the space by your usual methods, shibboleth, held up, whatever, and visit your local DSpace profile and use a special button to connect this profile uh, with, uh, with the ORCID. The process is exactly the same and um, you will be able to push information to ORCID. The ORCID key credential need to be set in your local CFG file. Uh, please pay attention to how you um, pass this information to your uh, IT support team or your service provider. It's required that you, of course, they are credentials, so you need to use a secure channel to, to send this information to your provider. Uh, another detail that is important, uh, Probably you know that uh, the space uh, have some, a sort of integration with ORCID uh, science version of uh, five, more or less. Uh, this was very limited um, in the past and was only used to look up the ORCID registry during the submission to search for author name. And this is still available. This integration is not based on uh, the previous uh, work, on the previous feature that is named ORCID Authority. And the ORCID Authority feature was only able to um, retrieve what, is, what are named the not authenticated ORCID ID because it was just a manual search process and uh, the owner of the ORCID profile was not involved in uh, uh, approve uh, this linkage in any way. So they are considered not authenticated ORCID ID. The new integration instead using to OAuth uh, flow, so asking for permission to the researcher that need to input their ORCID credential to establish the connection, uh, store authenticated ORCID ID. Mm. One side uh, note about that is that unfortunately, up to now, there is not yet a migration path from the previous feature to the uh, new one. So if you are at the space five or six uh, user and already have ORCID ID in uh, your authority for, uh, for your publication metadata, uh, this information cannot be translated into new format without manual work. So if you need help on that, 
please address one of the display service provider or you need to plan for some manual work on your side. There are also some tricky details that you need to be aware of uh, about the synchronization. So to log in via ORCID uh, right now require that the email uh, available in the ORCID profile must be public or at least uh, visible to trusted party. So users that only have a private email address in the ORCID profile will be not able to log in in this space via ORCID. Uh, this is not uh, true, is not a requirement uh, to just to establish the connection. So if you log in in uh, this space via Shibboleth, for instance, and just want to connect your local profile uh, with ORCID, you can do that also if your ORCID profile have, uh, has just a private email address. To synchronize funding detail, um, some, uh, a, a minimal set of information or metadata are required. So if you want to push to ORCID a project, a space project, you need to at least have one, um, it, uh, one funder mentioned in the project. And this funder need to be proper identified. So this means that they need to, be, to have an identifier that could be the Crossref ID, the Ringgold, uh, the Heli-AI or uh, the ISNI uh, identifier. Also, these funder need to have the, the city and the country into metadata. These are not so um, evident requirements. So it could be the case that in your uh, this space uh, record for the funder, this information will be missing. And in this case, this space will be not able to synchronize um, this piece of information with ORCID. Also for the project, you need to have at least an identifier, but this is uh, usually a much more common uh, requirement and the grand number is usually enough to, to, um, to manage this uh, uh, synchronization. So the result of that could be, if you try to push a uh, finding that doesn't have enough information, uh, you could be informed by in this space about which are the, uh, the lucky uh, detail in, uh, um, in, in your record. So in this screen, you see that uh, the, the funding that I was trying to submit uh, doesn't have at least one identifier and the funder was not mentioned in the space record. And once fixed this problem, maybe you could incur in problem related to the funder record. And in this case, uh, the, the name of the funder, the legal name of the funder was not present. Uh, the city and the country was not included in our uh, space metadata. So these details need to be fixed by, uh, by order. I see many questions that come from the, the chat. I don't know if you prefer to start yeah. to answer this question now, or if you want to also have a view of what is coming for this um, implementation. What do you I think? That, I think that's a great question, Andrea. Why don't you finish up this slide? I think the what's next is, is certainly interesting, and then I can help moderate these questions for you. Perfect. So uh, what's next? Uh, this integration is part of the official version of the space, science version 7.3. The latest version of the space is 7.4 now. Uh, there are some improvement that uh, we also uh, become aware of during the, the review process that we uh, perform with the ORCID team. Um, to, to have the, this integration certified. And we have already uh, fixed this, implemented this improvement and they will be donated to the DSpace community. So we are 
going to, to open a couple of pull requests over the next week to include also these other minor uh, improvement. Uh, among this, these, there are the proper display of the ORCID ID badge. Right now, if you connect your display profile, research profile with ORCID, the ORCID ID is stored in this space, the authenticated ORCID ID is stored in this space, but is not displayed uh, anywhere in this space, in the public uh, display page. Uh, we have modified that so that uh, you will see the usual ORCID badge uh, in, uh, in the space local profile when this ORCID ID has been authenticated. Uh, there is also an issue in the current implementation uh, related to the possibility for a researcher to modify metadata of um, her profile. The issue is that the system allow also to manual modify the ORCID. And this of course is against the best practice of ORCID. So uh, we have made possible to block um, to protect the ORCID ID against manual modification on the user interface. And we put a couple of int to inform the researcher about the purpose and the scope of ORCID so that the researcher will become uh, more aware of the initiative, uh, this especially for researchers that don't know yet um, what ORCID is and which are the, uh, the benefit of using ORCID. There are also another uh, couple of features that are currently available in this space, Chris. So our extension of this space, the, the extension that for science maintain is open source. And the plan is to, to port, to backport also this extra feature to, uh, to the space over the time. It will require involvement from the community for uh, the review process. So, uh, it will take some time, but in the couple of uh, a couple of uh, version of the space, uh, we hope to um, to contribute back also feature that make uh, um, full benefit, uh, give you um, the possibility to use the premium API of Orchid, uh, the premium API of Orchid that are available to um, consortium member as you are. Uh, are the one that uh, allow you um, more real time synchronization between ORCID and the system. And in this case, we'll be uh, using this, in, in this premium API, this space will be able to uh, suggest to the researcher in near real time on uh, publication that has been added to the ORCID profile and are not yet present in this space. So that the researcher can import the metadata from ORCID and uh, hopefully uh, attach an open access version of these content uh, to be stored in, uh, in, uh, in the repository. Well, thank you so much, Andrea, for this uh, presentation. I'm sure, uh, like me, everyone was excited to learn more about this integration, about what's coming next, uh, about how to use it specifically. So um, I know I'll certainly be turning to the recording of this over the next few weeks to make sure that I'm uh, I'm on top of everything for, for the rest of the community. Um, we do, as you noticed, have a bunch of questions already in the chat. So we'll go through them one by one, and please do feel free to type more questions as we're going. We have a good amount of time, 15 minutes, for the uh, the next set. And also, once we're done with the uh, with the things that are written down, uh, please do feel free to, uh, I believe we'll be able to have you unmute and ask questions live. So uh, this first question is, does the batch process show up in the processes, capital P, feature of DSpace 7.4? The, the, the batch processing is mean to um, is something that uh, you need to schedule on cron tab of the server, and uh, the purpose is to um, check for all the change uh, um, that are occurred on uh, research the space researcher profile that have selected this uh, synchronization mod over today 
and push all these change to ORCID uh, when the script run. In this way, if your researchers say, okay, I want to have everything synchronized in batch, this researcher doesn't need to log it in into, into the space repository to uh, manually uh, push each single uh, publication. But as soon as the publication has been added to her profile uh, by a librarian, for instance, or a repository manager, over tonight, this publication will be also pushed to, um, to the ORCID profile. And the same will also occur, of course, for up-to-date of existing record that was already synchronized with ORCID. Okay, thanks, Andrea. Um, there's a question from Pierre here, who I see has uh, turned on his camera, hello. Um, and, and I think some of this you got at in the presentation, but it'll be good to just go over it again, which is, uh, does the new integration require people to use the new DSpace 7 entities, which are publication, persons, and project, or can it be used without enabling them? Yes, as I said, uh, these are mandatory features. So at least you need to enable person and publication. Uh, you need to enable also um, organization and project if you wish to synchronize also to the funding uh, detail uh, to ORCID. You are not required to synchronize all the detail uh, because there is a setting into ORCID CFG file of the space that uh, uh, allow you to configure which scope you want to um, ask for uh, for permission to your researcher. So if you don't plan to use project, uh, you cannot ask for this specific permission, and you can uh, you can avoid to to create this entity in your uh, in your this space. Thank you. Uh, we have another question here from Mike. Does retrieval from import require a member API uh, to be configured, or I guess can it be done on the public API? The import can be also done with the um, uh, with the public API. The only thing that uh, required uh, the member API is uh, is push information to to ORCID. So also the login can be done with the public API. So all that, the authentication piece, all of that can be done on the public API, but if you want your scholars to be getting directly publications pushed to their uh, ORCID records, then you need the member API turned on. Yes, and also for the import part is not in the current feature of the space, but in the plan for the future when we will um, backport the functionality from the space, Chris, to suggest uh, publication to be uh, imported in this space automatically look into the ORCID profile. If you are using the um, public APK, uh, you will have a lower rate. So the performance will be uh, worse than with the member APK, but also the, the information that you can access will be uh, in part limited because researcher could eventually decide to have new record uh, added to their profile, new publication added uh, to their profile by other party like publisher or uh, other system as private information or, uh, or trusted information in their profile. In this case, this information will be not uh, visible to a system that just used to or the public API. But if you are using the member API, uh, this space will be able to propose to you to import also publications that are only visible to trusted part. So this is an important point and important added value for member, I guess. Go ahead, Mike, I see your, your turn. Uh, on yeah, I was just gonna, <clears throat> I was only going to add, I guess as a follow-up. So uh, you mentioned that in order for this to work, you have to have um, uh, those entities configured. Uh, so you would have the person entities and I guess the funder entities or project. So do I have to enable those entities to use the import feature or 
is the import feature independent? If I just have an API key and I just want to use the import feature, but I don't need to push stuff to Orchid, do I need to go through the other configuration steps for entity? No, for to import also entities are not required. So you need to manage a bit mapping file to say that this import from Orchid is also suitable for generic item object. But after that is will uh, will work. Thanks all. Uh, we have a question from Marianne here asking if only metadata is imported to DSpace. Yes, the, the, the answer is yes in general. All the uh, external source that you can use to import information in this space right now only provide metadata. In the case of ORCID, uh, uh, this is currently a limitation of the ORCID itself because ORCID doesn't host any, uh, any file directly. All right, we have another question from Pierre here. Um, and this is about the ORCID search. I just want to clarify ahead of time. Um, there are, of course, as Andrea was talking about, two things happening in DSpace right now around ORCID. There is this integration uh, that we've been talking about today. And there is the previous feature, which ORCID CA did a webinar on back in January of 2021, um, that uh, is sort of this this plugin or patch for DSpace that enabled you as the librarian to search and um, add ORCID IDs and information, uh, not authenticated because the user didn't authenticate themselves, but validated in the sense that you're pulling out a real ORCID ID and not just you know typing out something random. So from Pia, this question, the ORCID search that was shown to import metadata does not need the API key to work, right? Now, or, now Pia, did I get that right? Are you talking about the former ORCID search tool or are you talking about the new newer import tools? It's okay. Uh, it, it has been answered by, uh, by what Mike was saying. My question? Great. Perfect. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No, that's that's good to hear. Thanks, Pierre. Um, I do want to, Andre, at the end, if, if there uh, is time, I do want to come back to that question of the ORCID uh, search tool separate from this new integration, because I think there are many or some folks on here are probably already using it. And I do think we we want to talk a little bit about what it means to continue to use it and and ideally not continue to use it shift completely to this this integration but we'll we'll talk about that in a sec um so we have a question from rebecca here can you clarify the use of and this was from the slide uh orchid login is not mandatory to enable the integration does that just mean that technically the integration can be enabled without a login but for any individual researcher to pull or push to orchid they will still need to log into orchid from within their space profile Yes, exactly. So the, the, the possibility is then you enable the synchronization and the connection of the local profile with the ORCID profile without allowing user to log in in this space via ORCID. Of course, if you do that, in any case, when the connection is established between the local this space research profile and the ORCID profile, the user will be requested to log in on ORCID just to grant a permission to this space for this integration. Uh, I can show you, oh, I can share my screen again. Uh, I guess that our uh, administrator uh, account, oh, I'm not sharing yet this one. I'm just logged in in uh, the demo again with uh, our administrator. Okay, so this user, if I remember correctly, has been not yet linked to any um, ORCID profile. So if I go on my uh, space profile and in the ORCID setting, yes, you will see that right now this is not yet connected. So to connect this profile, I can use this button. Now that is independent from the login. So I, uh, 
logged in uh, just with username and password in this case. And eventually I can disable completely the option to log it in via ORCID, but clicking here now to OAuth uh, uh, flow will start and I can uh, provide my ORCID uh, uh, credential to link this profile uh, with uh, my displays profile. Gotcha. Thank you, Andrea. So, so if I'm understanding correctly, we're talking about two separate things. There's logging into DSpace with ORCID using the single sign-on um, or something like that. And then there's this connection authentication feature within the profile, right? Yes. Perfect. Great. Um, Andrea, I see you and Mike had a conversation about the trusted party. Is that clear now? Uh, am I okay to move to the next question? Yeah, no, I um, I'm, I think my question was a little bit of a follow on from Becca's question. Um, Got it. Essentially, that's how you make the repository a trusted party. It's either through login when you're logging into DSpace or you're making that authentication in the profile. So there's no other way, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, Pierre, your next question. Was that also covered uh, or did you want to follow up with it? No, it's fine with what uh, Andrea just shared. Uh, it's it's exactly. perfectly answered exactly. my question, yeah. All right, so glad. All right, so then we've got a question from Jose. Uh, if an item has multiple authors, can each author go into his or her profile page and push works to ORCID? Yes, this is the way that uh, ORCID data model work. So each, prof um, each researcher make uh, individual decision. And if you have a single publication connected to two, uh, the space researcher profile, both researcher will be invited to push this publication to ORCID. And each one will just push to, they, to her ORCID profile. So if the first author decide to push this publication, this will appear, for instance, in my profile, if Josh decide to don't push this publication, this publication will not appear in the Josh profile. Also, if uh, we um, we have code to read something. All right. Well, we've got one minute left and one question left, so I'll uh, we'll go to that. It's from Adam, and it says, if we enable the Orchid login, will anyone with an Orchid login be able to log into our repos repository, even if they're not a member of our institution? Yes, and you can decide if uh, a user that doesn't have yet a, a space uh, account uh, will uh, have a new account created automatically or not. For this reason, uh, we know that uh, um, some institutions prefer to don't enable the ORCID login because they only want to have uh, um, access uh, for uh, uh, their internal researcher. So, this is why it's really important that the login feature is separated from the connection feature. So you can use uh, bot if you wish, but you can still use the synchronization also without you enable uh, the login uh, via ORCID. Well, thank you so much, Andrea, for giving this presentation. I know uh, I've been looking forward to it for a while and I wanna thank everyone for attending. Merci beaucoup à vous tous. Uh, if you have any questions, amazing. Paolo has just thrown our contact information into the chat. Uh, you can reach out to us that way. Um, and hopefully we'll be talking more about DSpace 7.3 and beyond and ORCID soon. Merci à tous. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Andrea. Stay tuned for the recording and the notes and slides. Thank have you. a great day. Bye -bye. Thanks. Bye.